Hey guys, Tony KD8RTT. I'm gonna do a little tutorial how-to video um, to quiet this guy down. This is the MFJ4125. It's a little 25 amp power supply, as you can see. Um, it's a small little one. I've done a review of it in, a, in the past, so click on the annotation. You can check out that review. Um, generally, I like it. The only problem is, is it's really loud. Um, everyone seems to, you know, kind of be in consensus with it. The fan in the back here visible there you go it's loud it's very loud even when it's idling um, it just seems to be sitting at a very high speed so um there's been people have tried to you know fix this um some people put in like a controller that throttles the fan um uh, as temperature you know depending on the temperature um, others have just taken a more simplistic approach which is what i'm gonna do and install a little resistor in line with the uh the um, power to the fan. So um, I did some reading online. Um, I'm definitely not the first person to do this. And it seemed like some people were doing um, like 100 ohm resistors and some people did some calculations and figured a little bit less um, was better. Somewhere around like 65 ohms. Um, I have a 100 ohm 5 watt resistor, which should do fine. Um, but I'll have my disclaimer here now. Uh, if you do this and, you know, uh, do this sort of thing, uh, at your own risk, I'm not uh, responsible if you burn up your power supply, your radio, whatever, um, or anything. Um, this is just me showing how I'm doing it. Um, again, it's your own fault if you screw your, radio, your power supply up, or anything else for that matter, if you screw it up, um, because this doesn't work properly. So, like I said, I'm going to use a 5 watt 100 ohm resistor because I had it. Um, that's I think it's a little overkill. Uh, you can do the calculation to figure out for yourself, but should be good to go. So, um, we're going to open this thing up. It's pretty easy to open. There are four screws on each side, and uh, I'll get that opened up. Okay, everything's unscrewed. Before I take the top off, I want to do a little... Uh, I'm going to power it up just so you can see how loud it is. I don't know how this is going to translate into the video, but we'll power it up just to kind of demonstrate how loud it is before we modify it. It's plugged in here. Okay, switched on. So it's pretty loud. I mean, it's not super loud, um, but it's definitely audible and, you know, annoying. So. That's what it sounds like beforehand. So again, the, the plan here is to slow the fan down by putting that resistor in there. Um, so basically you're less voltage over the, over the guy. So um, now that we have it on screw, just lift the top off here. Kind of slide, slide it off in the easiest way. Okay. Now you have the inside of the power supply. So again, I'm gonna give you a warning that there's some parts in here that could zap you. Um, so I would recommend, after powering it up, letting it sit for a few minutes um, to discharge. Um, but I'm not going to stick anything in here yet because um, it was just on. But I can show you right now that we're, what we're dealing with. So here's the fan, of course. Um, the wire actually goes under this main circuit board. And way down in here, there is a little connector. And that is the fan connector. So we're gonna pull that guy off the board, um, and you can kind of see. Oh, you can see this light. There you go. This wire here is one is the positive wire to the fan from that little connector. Again, goes under the board. Um, so that's what we're gonna deal with here. But as you notice, there's not a lot of slack. Um, so let me get some more light in there. So you have to be very careful when you're doing this. So again, I'm using this resistor. I'm also using some heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna cut up. So you don't short anything out, that's important. I recommend doing that. But I'm gonna let it discharge here for a few minutes just to be safe so that these caps are discharged. And um, we'll get to it. Okay, so um, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the connector. Um, I just use some yellow rose pliers, carefully sticking them in there, and just pull it straight out. Not sure how well you can see that, but. I'm um, just going to pull the connector out. It's not that hard to get out, um, but I definitely need some pliers to do it. And let's see if I can kind of maneuver things. Okay, so here you go. Here's your main wire that we're going to be working with. Um, let's see if we can move it a bit. Okay. 
All right, so I'll try to get it out of there. Okay, so I kind of got the connector out of there. So notice it's not there's not much slack here um, to play with. So I'm um, gonna need to trim the positive here, um, strip it, basically put back, put the resistor in line with it. Not uh, not forgetting the heat shrink to prevent anything from shorting. So um, let's see how I'll do this. I'll get it cut up, kind of ready, and then I'll come back and uh, show, me, show me putting it together. Okay, I'm kind of prepped here to go. Uh, I've got the heat shrink on there and I'm trimmed, so we're going to get this all tinned and uh, soldered up here. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so uh, there's more than a solder together. Got the heat shrink, I still gotta melt that. But I should be able to, you know, heat that up and then reroute the wires and we'll be good to go. All right, now I got the heat shrink melted or shrunk, I should say. It's not just rerouting it, which can be kind of tricky. Um, so again, you got the heat shrink, which is great because now you're not gonna get any shorts. Don't really have to worry about that. Gonna find some needle nose pliers quite helpful for mounting this back into the uh, back into its little socket there that goes one way <laughs> okay there it is plugged back in. Um, so yeah, just try to make it fit in there in a way that's not gonna, you know, screw anything up. Um, again, it's, uh, heat has the heat shrink, but you know, just want to play it safe. Don't want anything I could easily, no high voltage or anything near it, but I think we should be good. So now I'm gonna get it put back together. Um, we're gonna test it out and see, uh, how it, or, yeah, how it did. Okay, so now it's put back together and it hooked up to power. It's off right now, um, but we'll go ahead and turn it on and see how it sounds. Definitely quieter. Um, you can still hear it, um, but it's definitely quieter. And uh, you can still feel air movement out the back. So I think it'll be all right. Um, again, um, this could burn the power supply out due to lack of cooling. It's possible. Um, but I think it'll be okay. I wouldn't suggest doing this if you're right up near 25 amps all the time. Um, again, I usually, I mostly do sideband and uh, some digital, but I'm not gonna be doing, you know, digital at 100 watts um, on the radio. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't pull a ton of power constantly. I think that'd be a bad idea. Um, but for, you know, general sideband uses at 100 watts or so on a radio, I think it'll be all right. Definitely a bit quieter, and uh, I think it'll work out. So, all right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. It's a pretty simple project overall. Um, you know, you just got to be careful with how you're routing things and that sort of thing, and uh, should be good to go. So, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, remember to subscribe, and we'll see you later. 73.